Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion for January 30th, 2022. Now, first off, I hope everyone was safe during the blizzard that went on through the northeastern portions of the United States, but unfortunately, Mother Nature does not wait for us to recover. It's going to send us another weather system here. And this one also has the potential to create significant impacts with significant amounts of ice, severe weather, heavy amounts of snow, you name it at this point, even flash flooding could be thrown on the table. So let's get straight into what I'm trying to track here with the Euro model. And we're gonna be taking a look at the simulated radar here for the most part. You can see how for the most part from now all the way up until Wednesday, there isn't really too much. There's a bit of a low pressure system, an Alberta clipper that moves on through creating snow for portions of Ontario. But this is when stuff starts to get really interesting. You can see a warm front that begins to develop here across portions of the central United States heading off towards the Midwest. And this is when things really start to get interesting because this low pressure system actually brings cold air behind this, behind this new developing low pressure system that comes down here from the northwestern portions of the United States. And this is when things really start to kind of get really interesting because that warm front then kind of becomes a bit of a barrier to where there could potentially be snow the further north you go and then right along the border between where it is freezing and where it's not freezing, you could potentially see some freezing rain and sleet along that. And that's along the time frame of Tuesday night, late Tuesday night or all the way into early Wednesday morning. And that'll continue to be the case too all the way past Wednesday as well. Look at this. As this continues to move on through from Wednesday into Thursday, that low pressure system really starts to become a lot better defined. You have a lot of moisture that's being pulled up in the Gulf of Mexico. So severe weather will exist across portions here in the deep south. And north of that, north of the warm front here that's present along this low pressure system, you can also see some snow and the residual freezing rain that'll create ice right along the same exact areas that got freezing rain the day prior. So if that doesn't tell you anything, that tells you that the temperatures here over the areas that will get freezing rain will continue to be below freezing so that ice will not have anywhere to go for the most part. It'll continue to stay overcast because a lot of the precipitation still lingers on through and you're going to continue to get more and more wintry precipitation over and over and over again as this pushes about towards the mid and latter stages of the week. So let's play this out here all the way on to Thursday and you can see the band of severe weather actually extends here from central Tennessee all the way down towards portions of extreme eastern Louisiana, including Alabama and Mississippi. So areas over there, all right, this is starting to get into the severe weather season now. We're starting to shift into February here on Thursday and you guys need to watch out for some severe weather that can linger on through. It more than likely will not be super significant, but it's still something to keep an eye on for, in my opinion. And then, of course, areas that are in the blue and the light pink over here. I mean, you guys need to definitely watch out. I mean, more and more wintry precipitation is going to continue to linger on through much of these areas. And these are some of the forecasted freezing rain totals there. You can see almost about an inch and a half of freezing rain that could occur in some of the heaviest impacted areas. And this swath ranges all the way over here from Oklahoma all the way on through towards portions of the Ohio River Valley and further towards New England. So we got to watch out for this because the ice could potentially be a major threat here as this moves along. On the other hand, you could potentially see some significant amounts of sleet over this area too. Almost three inches of sleet is possible on top of the freezing rain. And then of course, everyone wants to know how much snow that some areas could potentially get. I mean, look at this. You could see some significant amounts of snow across portions of northern Illinois and Indiana, as well as into portions of Michigan and Ohio, heading on towards portions of southern Ontario. So watch out for that. And if we take a look at the precipitation across the board, I didn't really mention the northwest a whole lot, but you guys do get a storm that'll start to move on through here pretty soon. It'll actually occur here from Sunday night into Monday. You can see how the rain and wintry precipitation starts to move on through into your general vicinity. And that'll continue to linger all the way through throughout much of the beginning of this week up until Wednesday. And you guys get a hefty amount of precipitation from this too, almost up to two to three inches of precipitation whether it is wintry or regular precipitation in general but i mean look at this massive swath here that's across the united states 
heavy amounts of precipitation as possible, and that could include flash flooding in specific areas. So if we can get this information out to as many people as possible by sharing this video with friends and family and on social media, by copying the link and sending it to a direct message to friends, by texting your family and stuff like that, if they live in these areas, they're probably going to want to know this information. So please be sure to share this with as many people as possible. And by liking the video, you actually help me get this on to more and more people on YouTube, essentially helping me spread the information to as many people as possible and by subscribing that also does that too as well as turning on notifications to stay up to date with all the information i will provide because i will be uploading videos updating you all as to what could potentially be coming now to try and understand why this all is happening we're going to want to take a look at the satellite imagery to try and get an idea as to what's happening with the atmosphere and what the general flow of the atmosphere actually is so you can see this massive dip in the jet stream right within here this huge trough that is lingering from the massive blizzard or bomb cyclone that went on through the northeast and now because that has pushed on through we're kind of in a bit of a period to where we don't really have a lot of active weather besides this surface low pressure system that's moving on through portions of texas but sooner rather than later, we're going to have a low pressure system that's going to dig deep down in towards portions of Texas again. And that's going to be the staple of this entire winter event. We're also going to have that low pressure system that I was talking about here. You can barely see it off of the coast of Alaska and British Columbia. And this is going to be the one that's going to be that Alberta clipper. That's going to bring some snow across portions of the upper Midwest into portions of Ontario and Southern Canada. So that's going to be the thing that's going to bring all that cold air behind it and aid this low pressure system down here that's going to form towards the mid part of this week. And that's going to help create the wintry precipitation from the Central Plains to the Ohio River Valley and all the way up through into the Northeast. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the 500 millibar wind shear, which is about six kilometers above ground level. And once again, if you want to take a look at the time, it is above me in Eastern. And let's just see how this all plays out. So you can see that massive trough that I was talking about that was digging on through off the coast of the United States and the remnants of that bomb cyclone continuing to still churn about. You can also see that surface low pressure system that's continuing to stay across portions of the southwestern United States. And then we also have that low pressure system that's over here towards portions of the northwestern territories in British Columbia. And that's going to be our clipper that's going to move on through and also bring that cold winter air that it's going to help aid this winter system. So let's play this out here. You can see how the wind shear really starts to kind of dig in with that new low pressure system that forms on through and becomes that Alberta clipper. And then we also have some significant wind shear that's going to start digging down and aid this surface low pressure system that's just off the coast of the Western United States and help basically fuel this entire system. So watch how this all plays out. Boom. Now we have this huge dip in the jet stream right here. This big trough that's surging on through and this is going to be the staple for our wind shear we have some enhanced wind shear across portions of the southern plains all the way through towards the ohio river valley and for the severe weather aspect of this the 500 millibar wind shear is sustainable for severe weather and for example let's go ahead and take a look at two things that i want to compare here on the left is the anomaly temperature in Fahrenheit. So this tells you as to whether the temperatures are above average or below average. So the reds and anything else along the reds is above and the greens, blues and purples is below average. And then, of course, on the right, we also have our temperatures in Fahrenheit as well. So let's play this out here. For the most part, you can see from Sunday into Monday, everything seems to be above average for the most part, especially here on Monday afternoon into Monday evening. You can see here some significant above average temperatures, especially in the northern plains and southern Canada. But then watch what happens here as things officially flip a switch. Look at that massive cold air that is starting to build over towards British Columbia and Alberta. And that is all going to shoot down low. And also, the other thing that I want to point out, look at this warm front that begins to develop here. You can see how it ranges from Texas and Oklahoma all the way up into the Great Lakes. And that is also going to set up our wintry precipitation as this moves on through so look at this how this continues to push on boom big massive wave of cold air that starts to seep in across much of the united states 
And at some point, it also gets really significant. Look at how below average these temperatures are over in the portions of the southern plains. I mean, we're looking at some instances of 41 degrees below average for your temperatures over there. And that gets into portions of almost the negatives in the portions of northern Texas as well as New Mexico. That is freezing cold in some of these areas. I mean, look at this over here in Texas too. The freezing line, which is somewhere within this white area right next to the blue and this kind of reddish color, that is where it, the freezing line is for the most part as your surface temperatures. And it gets well below into portions of San Antonio and Austin. And anywhere north of that, you're gonna expect even lower temperatures than that as your low temperature for Thursday into Friday. And that's not expected to go away anytime soon as well. Look at this, as you start to head in towards the weekend here, you can still continue to see some freezing temperatures across not just the southern portions of the United States, but much of the United States here. It also goes into portions of Florida as well to where you guys could get to about 40 to 30 degree temperatures over there. So definitely a massive cold air Arctic invasion that is moving on through into much of the United States. So now we're gonna take a look at our 850 millibar wind shear level, which is about one kilometer above ground level. Now this is gonna give us an idea as to what the flow of the atmosphere is in the mid to lower levels, specifically the lower level wind shear or our low level jet is what we like to call it. And we're gonna show you here that as we get into Tuesday with that Alberta clipper that moves on through, you can see a lot of that wind shear that is surging on from the north and west to the south and east, bringing that cold air in behind that low pressure. Now, on the other hand, if we scoot this off a little bit further towards Wednesday and Thursday, you can see the wind shear now start to really ramp up here across portions of the deep south. And we have our new low pressure system that's gonna begin to develop here with this counterclockwise flow. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna bring in a lot of that moisture here from the Gulf of Mexico into portions of the deep south, creating your severe weather over here into portions of Texas, Louisiana, maybe Arkansas, definitely Mississippi and Alabama, maybe Tennessee, definitely Georgia and Florida. And that'll basically range from Wednesday all the way through until Friday, maybe even Saturday at the latest as well. And we can even see that here with the dew points. You can see that anywhere within the areas of this yellowish bluish, that's when you start to get to about 60 degree dew points, which is good enough for severe weather. And you can see how those dew points in the Gulf of Mexico start to rise up into the areas that we're gonna be watching for potential severe weather. And then even as we get from Wednesday into Thursday, Thursday, look at this massive spike of dew points here, this massive cold front as well that starts to push on through as well overnight into the early morning hours of Thursday across portions of western Mississippi and northern Louisiana. So we're definitely going to have to watch out for severe weather with that day. Would not be surprised if we had, say, a two out of five on the severe weather scale for strong damaging winds within that time period. But this is not expected to go away anytime soon either. Look at this as it goes into Thursday afternoon and Thursday evening. We have some enhanced moisture across portions of Mississippi, Alabama, and even extreme eastern Louisiana to where there could potentially be some severe weather over there as well. And then if we go on over here towards Friday, you can see the boundary continues to shift further and further east and portions near Jacksonville, as well as areas near Tallahassee, maybe even up into portions of the Carolinas, they could potentially get some severe weather as well. So this is definitely something that is a whole entire mega storm that is really surging on through. It's not just one aspect of the storm that could potentially be dangerous. It's the winter, it's the flash flooding, and it's the severe weather that could potentially create some tornadoes on all three days that could potentially be a factor as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the instantaneous flash rate. This basically tells us how many lightning strikes could happen within a six hour period. And this is a good idea to tell as to where the thunderstorms could potentially be. So let's go ahead and run this out here. From Wednesday into Thursday, you can see the overnight hours, you start to see a lot of lightning that is starting to show up from Houston all the way up towards Monroe. That'll continue to push on through into the evening hours of Thursday, all the way through onto Friday. And you can see at Friday evening, a lot of showers and thunderstorms continue to linger even on through into early morning hours of Saturday. Now, on the other hand, let's talk a little bit about winter weather here. And I'm going to get a little complex, so just try and bear with me here. 
Imagine the atmosphere as different layers. We are going to have the 850 millibar layer, as I said, the level of the atmosphere. We're going to also have the 700 millibar level in the atmosphere, which is about three kilometers above ground level. And then we also have the surface level. Now, the higher and higher you go in the atmosphere, the colder it gets. So the precipitation that forms out there is really going to start as some sort of frozen precipitation. We'll call it snow here in the beginning. And about three kilometers above ground level, anywhere within this white area and north of it is where the freezing line actually exists. So over here, this is where snow actually forms. And then down south of that, that is where rain actually forms. Now, if we transition from this level to the 850 millibar level, which if you remember is one kilometer above ground level, you can see how that line starts to recede a bit further towards the north and anywhere in between that black line and that yellow line, that's where the snow starts to melt into rain. And as we transition over here, towards the surface level temperature, you can start to see that that freezing line starts to recede a lot further south. And it's hard to tell, but you do have some of those areas in between the yellow and the black to where it starts to turn back into those white temperatures. And that is an indicator of the freezing temperatures starting to recede a bit further south. And that is the main inhibitor of the freezing rain. Now, the unfortunate thing is, this happens not just in one day, but over the time period of several days. So we can see this exact setup here as you push on through into portions of latter Thursday and Friday. Look at this. The cold air continues to move over that line and it'll just continue to just linger around all the way through until the end of the weekend. So we've got a multi-day outbreak of winter weather, severe weather and potential flash flooding that is possible. So stay tuned to the channel. I'll continue to update you guys as much as possible, but that'll be it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, share this with friends and family and on social media, send them a text message, send them a DM, send them something. We got to get this information out to as many people as possible because I am sure that someone is going to be impacted by this. There is no doubt in my mind that that will be the case. Now, our give it to me straight question of the day is, what do you think the most heavily impacted area will be in the storm and what aspect of weather could they see? The most interesting comment will be pinned and until the next video, I will see you guys around. So peace out everyone.